Welcome back to Donkey Rescue TV. Today we're going to talk donkey adoption with Michelle Hoffman. So sit back, relax, and cue the music. My name is Mark Myers. Most people just call me the Burrow Man. I travel the country with my dogs rescuing donkeys from abuse, neglect, abandonment, or sometimes it's just wild burrows that the government doesn't want anymore. My staff helps me care for more than 3,000 donkeys all across the country. Donkey rescue is not what we do. It's who we are. So, Michelle, you, how long have you been with us? Um, going on 10 years. 10 years. My goodness. For those that aren't playing the home edition, Michelle's the one who saved my life when I uh, dropped that tractor on my head. Uh, you can actually see that. Uh, that that's on our YouTube channel. Uh, it was pretty hairy, but thanks to her, I'm still here and kicking. So, uh, Michelle, uh, when people want to adopt a donkey, what do they do? Um, they call in and usually they'll ask, you know, what's the adoption process and the adoption process is, um, you'd speak to me first. You fill out an application on our website at donkeyadoption.org. Um, you fill that application out, it's reviewed by me or our PBDR East or PBDR West regional managers. And once everything is okay with the paperwork, we go into the step of meeting the adopter and finding out what animal suits them and where they can go to visit and visit the animals. Because we have locations all across yes, the country. Yes, all across so the country. It really doesn't matter where you are. If we don't have a location right next door, we're probably going to be driving trailer loaded donkeys through your area because we're... That's what we do. We move donkeys. So let's talk about the donkeys themselves that go into the... Because a lot of people, when they think donkeys, they're thinking of the BLM's Wild Burrow Project, where right. they're actually wild animals. And we don't do that. Our donkeys are not wild. So tell us a little bit about the temperament and the training that goes into them. By the time somebody adopts a donkey as a pet, it's really like a big dog. Um, the girls, our trainers, spend hours... Um, gentling the donkeys which is basically just sitting in a pen with them feeding them treats getting them used to people and then they work on well the them. volunteers can they yes, come out also true. kind of help because when the donkeys are rescued and they go out into the paddocks they're one of a hundred yes. so they they have very minimal contact with humans correct and so to take them from that and in, right into training would be a little traumatic so correct. what we do is we transition into a smaller right. group and then the volunteers can come out and feed treats and try right. to get, get them a little more friendly yeah. before they go into actual yeah. training. Yeah, we have transition pens where we do love our volunteers. They come out big, little, small. We have older couples. We have kids. And they just hands on the donkeys until the girls can get in there and put halters and lead ropes. And then they go through the process of picking up their feet. But that could be a month down the road or it could be the next day. It just depends on the donkey and its attitude towards people. Well, and we use we use a, a grading system like you do in right. school. Yes. A through F, mm -hmm. and they get graded on all the different things they're supposed to do. And some donkeys are only friendly, right. and they're F on everything right. else. And after a few weeks or a month or whatever mm -hmm. the case may be, then we like to see a, a B plus before they go out. And that's At across least. the board. Yeah, yeah. about a B plus. Yeah. So why does anybody want a donkey? What are, what are these people? What, why, do, why, get, why do I want it? Well, I know I want a donkey, <laughs> but why do you want a donkey? Why do you want a donkey? Um, they're great animals. As far as pets, they are loyal as a dog. Um, they say man's best friend is a dog. Man's best friend is a donkey. I mean, Mark, for instance, he used to pack in the desert. Well, he had Job, who saved his life countless times, you know, chasing off wild animals and such. They're just great, loyal companions for yourself, your family, your kids, um, and they live to be 40 plus years old. So you're gonna have a companion for life. And it should be noted that the donkeys always belong to us even if they get adopted. And that's because people's lives change. That's just yeah. the reality. They get older, they move, they get job transfers, they get sick, all sorts of stuff happens in life. Um, sometimes they have to take care of their parents. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's things happening. We don't want the donkeys to fall into a bad situation right. so we just bring them back it's just that simple and age age wise we adopt out donkeys anywhere from two years old to here in texas we'll adopt out older donkeys if they're within a say 100 mile radius we'll adopt out a 19 20 year old if he or she is healthy enough 
All right. And it, the reason we do that, we just don't want to put old donkeys in trailers for long right. trips. That's just, right. we don't need to do that. It's not what we're about. Right, exactly. So we talked about how you do it. You go to donkeyadoption.org. We talked about why you do it. Where do the donkeys come from? The donkeys come from all over. Um, mainly we try to do work with law enforcement for abandoned and stray issues. Say if a donkey's running on the side of the road, you know, that's not good for anybody. So we work a lot with the local law enforcement. They'll call us up and they'll say, you know, we've got picked up a donkey on the side of the road, so we'll take him or her. And they just come from all over, all walks of life. We've even brought in some from Hawaii. So they've all parts of the country. All right, so people that are interested in adoption, what do they need? What, what, what are the requirements? Um, requirements for an adoption, you need uh, at least a three-sided shelter, depending where you are in the region of the United States. Some well, areas, it's adequate. Uh, right, Because what's adequate. adequate in Southern California is right. not adequate in Pennsylvania. Right. Or upstate New York. Because right. so if, if, yeah, if you're in a more deserty climate and you have a lot of trees and stuff that they can get shade and shelter from, you don't necessarily have to have a three-sided shelter. We go by um, each individual basis of um, the application that you fill out. What does that donkey need in that region? Right, exactly. What that donkey needs in that region. The type of fencing, um, you can have pipe fence, which that's what we use here. Um, barbed wire is not really recommended because like a donkey will spook and run right through it. So pipe fencing or the um, net wire fencing is best in most places. And then they just need the adequate shelter and a good grass hay to feed on. Yeah, we don't like seeing them out on real rich grass right. nonstop. They'll get fat and that leads to all kinds of problems. Um, also, a requirement is you have to live on the premises. You have to be around the donkey because they like companionship. You have to have hands on. The girls work real hard in training them, but if you don't keep up with that, the donkey is going to revert and he's going to lose his um, friendliness or his niceness. You've got to keep up, keep up with picking his feet up. For the farrier, you have to keep up with their worming and vaccinating schedule, which you get when you adopt a donkey. You get a packet, it has all the information in there for you because they're wormed and vaccinated before they leave here. And so that you put them on a regime and you do that, follow the schedule. You can do that yourself or you can get a vet to do it. But and if, donkeys make great companions. So always. if you have a horse, mm -hmm. a donkey makes a perfect companion. If you don't have a horse, you got to take two right. donkeys. You have to have an equine companion yes. for your donkey. That's Absolutely. not goats or cows. It needs to be a horse. Or a mule. Or a mule. True. All right, well, we're going to take a quick break, turn things over to producer Jess, and we'll see you on the other side. Peaceful Valley is able to continue saving donkeys because of our adopters. Many of our adopters are taking in donkeys for the first time and we are eager to help them succeed. Our care and feeding guide is available online at www.pvdrforms.org. If you or someone you know is interested in adopting, please visit our website at www.donkeyadoption.org. Back to you, Mark. And we're back. Uh, Michelle was just uh, sharing a story with us, so uh, why don't you tell the folks at home the story you were telling. All right, we have a donkey here that we named 2105. We had a call from a lady that was following this trailer, and the guy stopped, unloaded his donkey, and drove off. Just in the middle of just nowhere. Just in the middle of nowhere, on Highway 2105. And this donkey is chasing the trailer as the man is driving off. And this poor lady calls us and she said, I'm on 2105. I have this donkey that this guy just dropped. I just watched him drop this poor donkey off. And I don't have a lead rope. I don't have anything. All she had in her car was a balloon with the string on it. And she put that around 2105's neck and stood there until we got there. And we had her, we had 2105, maybe six months. She was a sweet, sweet donkey. And she got adopted out just right after that. But, you know. It's amazing the cruelty of people. Yeah. It really is. They, they don't put any worth on any anything. Right. But if you look at the way people treat people in this country, what are you going to do? I don't know. So, um, as we said earlier, Michelle and I are, are more than just employees here. We have a pretty close relationship. Because she basically put my head back together and held it in place 
when we were Held waiting for the, on. Held my ear on when we were waiting for the ambulance. And our, 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 our kids went to high school together. They're, they're very close. Uh, your kids work here. Yes. Which is, I mean, I, I know what that's like because, you know, boys grew up doing this. But um, Troy and Leah, uh, both, both, is Troy still here? I haven't yes. seen him around. He's, he's here early in the mornings because he's still doing summer classes. So yeah. he's locked in the fodder room, hanging, doing the fodder. All right. And then Leah just got her degree. Yes. So, but she's still working. She's one of our trainers. So what's that like? Share kind of what, what it's like to... Have you ever worked with your kids at a place like this? Not, no, not in a professional setting, but... Um, they help with farming. Yes, they help with farming, and they help their dad with that. Um, but having them here is really good. I mean, it's kind of... Uh, I know from Mark's perspective and mine, I'm a little harder on my kids than I would be on somebody else's kids. So, you know, if I need something done... I'm going to go to my kids, you know, just because... Because you know they're going to do, gonna it, do, do it, it right. And, yeah. Absolutely. So they're always like, you know, come on, Mom. Can't you ask somebody else? But it, it's good. Yeah, it's great having them around, and they're all going to be off soon, probably. My daughter's getting married in July, so they'll... To be another married. employee. To another employee, <clears throat> yeah. My son-in-law also works here. Our maybe. damn family tree doesn't have very many branches on it, I'll tell you that. Yeah. We like to keep it close. <laughs> So yeah, Troy's getting married next year. In April. And then... Leah's in July. And I don't have to go to either one. No, you have to go to both. Oh, well, all right. <laughs> well, since you brought it up, let's talk a little bit about the fodder room. We, we have a video on YouTube mm -hmm. that shows how the whole process works, and it's, it, it's pretty cool. It is. But that's sort of one of the things that we kind of put, put on you. Michelle is a catch-all. She does everything, from answering the phones to... Managing the fodder room to being a go-between, a, a buffer of sorts between me and everybody else. So, talk a little about the fodder room, how it works, and for the people that aren't going to click over and watch that other video. Okay, well, you should watch the video because it's a really cool room. Um, we grow rye grass seed from dry seed to nine days later, we harvest it and feed it to the donkeys. We use it for our um, skinny older guys or our special needs group that need an extra extra boost of nutrition. But it's pennies on the dollar compared to feeding a bag of feed. Uh, we can feed 150 pounds of fodder for around $1.25. Yeah. Where a bag it's, of feed... It's ryegrass too, it's which ryegrass. is really good for the donkeys. Right. And we chop it up so it kind mm -hmm. of looks like coleslaw. Yeah. It's easy for them to... And the whole thing's edible. Right. There's no dirt. It's just water, seeds, and it grows into this big mat. So... Yeah. And the nutrition actually mainly comes from, from the roots. And if I've tasted it, just I've I tasted too. the feed too, <laughs> it tastes like um, the bean sprout should get on a salad bar. Yep. And the donkeys love it. So Yeah, it's, it's really cool. And it's drought-resistant farming. Right. Who doesn't like that? And it's just one more reason you should come out to San Angelo Ranch and, and take the tour and yep. see what all we do here. It's a pretty amazing place. Well... Michelle, I want to thank you for coming. It's welcome. a pleasure as always. I don't get to see you as much as I travel so much, but uh, thank you very much. You're welcome. Again, if you're interested in adoption, uh, it's donkeyadoption.org. Uh, check it out. Read through the policy. See if uh, you're, you're right for us and we're right for you. And please remember that the Peaceful Valley Donkey Rescue is supported entirely through private donations. Go to our website, donkeyrescue.org. Make a donation, buy a t-shirt, coffee cup, whatever you need. Y'all be good. We're going to see you next time.